Maritime authorities made contact with Nicaragua after possibly capsizing of boats with migrants that presumably sailed from San Andres bound for Central America. A journalist of apparently Venezuelan origin reported through her social networks the case of a person of Venezuelan nationality who is apparently missing at sea. According to the publication, the person apparently sailed in a boat from San Andres with destination to Central America. The situation is being investigated by the competent authorities. Rear Admiral Hernando Matos, commander of CECIP, spoke on this matter. We have a situation at the moment that possibly a boat suffered mechanical failure arriving in Nicaragua where there are four people missing. We entered into communication with the Nicaraguan community. However, they state that they have not received any information on the matter. We have already given them the information and we have given them the contact of the relative of one of the people who apparently disappeared in this incident. It should be noted that the trafficking of migrants has not been new for the authorities as this has occurred on other occasions since unscrupulous people have seen San Andres as a bridge to reach Central America. We had already evidenced this situation and we had denounced it to the corresponding authorities, migration, the local government and the national police. We were also able to address this issue along with them. This is something that is not new on the island. If we remember in 2010 and 2012, we also had a similar situation in our islands where the islands of Providence and San Andres were used as a springboard to go to Central America and from there to go to the United States. At that time, it caused many accidents where there were many tragedies to regret. Today, we are again evidencing these situations with migrants who want to achieve the American dream. Several boats have been detained this year, which were illegally transporting people through the territorial sea. This year, the National Navy has already detained four boats with 50 foreigners who are trying to make this illegal transit. It is illegal because they do not comply with the regulations and the safety of the passenger transport. This endangers these people. On the other hand, during the weekend, Nicaraguan media reported that Venezuelan immigrants arrive in blue fields in their journey for the American dream. The publication reports that more than 40 citizens from Venezuela arrive at the Blue Fields Municipal Dock on Thursday afternoon, August 4th. The media reports that the group of immigrants came from Corn Island, where they had arrived by water from San Andres Island, Colombia. According to the publication, the authorities welcomed them. Law 2268 of 2022 was approved, which seeks to guarantee benefits to artisanal and commercial fishermen in the country. This is Law 2268, sanctioned on August 3 of this month by the Congress of the Republic, by which measures are established to protect the integrity, the living wage, and socioeconomic sustainability of artisanal, commercial, and subsistence fishermen. Among the measures are 1. The promotion of the affiliation to social security in the subsidized health regime to fishermen. 2. The national government shall promote the affiliation of artisanal and subsistence fishermen who are not included in the general pension system. 3. The national government shall promote an insurance mechanism for those artisanal fishermen who carry out their activity at sea due to high risk activity. Four. The national government shall establish a seasonal unemployment payment for fishermen during the closed seasons, the value of which shall be at least half a legal monthly minimum wage for each month that the measure lasts. Those fishermen who wish to avail themselves of the benefits established in the law must be duly recognized and formalized before the National Authority of Aquaculture and Fishing, AUNA. And after the inauguration of the new president of the Republic, the representative to the House for the Islands, Elizabeth J. Pine, is thankful for the inclusion of the island in the inauguration speech and made some requests for the community. 
foreign representative it is as vital importance to take into account the talent of the island and endorses the president proposal for the archipelago to become the center of the country in the western caribbean on behalf of my community and as a representative to the house i want to thank the president for his reference in his speech yesterday at his inauguration for it has been a long-standing dream that we have been pursuing not only the dream of the representative but of the entire community as a whole and we have a lot to contribute to the country's competitiveness and one of them is to become the hub of the country towards the western caribbean as we have always insisted we have insisted with the government that we can be present in these initiatives considering for example the capabilities of the men and women of the islands so that we can attend to those challenges that have been established such as becoming a great health center for the caribbean area we have a lot of capacity because of our language and our proximity to the region the representative also emphasized that there are still many things to work on in our archipelago we have asked the president to take us into account in the government plan to make a unique chapter where different strategies can be promoted such as turning san andres into a service export center bearing in mind the archipelago's capacity to disseminate music and make content Therefore, it is important what the president just said. The cultural environmental part of our islands is one of those tools that we can sell, as well as its biodiversity. San Andres has a lot of beauty to offer, the sea, fishing, the ecosystem, the knowledge of the ancestral construction of boats. Finally, the representative highlighted the island's capacity to influence foreign trade, taking into account status as a free port, which have been part of our livelihood. In order to reduce the backlog of documents within the entity, the Register Office extends its office hours on the island. The National Registry of Civil Status informed that its headquarters in the archipelago of San Andres, Providence and Santa Catalina Department extend its office hours for the delivery of identification documents to the entire island community. From now on, the attention will be from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. With this initiative, the entity seeks to streamline the process of delivery of documents held up. Now we start for news of the municipality with Millicent O'Neill. Good evening to all our viewers. This is the most relevant information from Old Providence and Catalina. As part of the social control exercise, the Office of the Comptroller General of the Republic is once again in the municipality to meet with overseers and with the community. The Comptroller General of the Republic is present again in the municipality to continue the development of social control and to know the progress of projects in education, public services, the construction of the airport, health, housing and tourism inns, these projects that are being developed on the island. Well, I, I want to invite the, the whole community to come out and participate in this process with the control area. If you know what's going on, what they're doing, if you have any doubt or have any trouble, any problem with your, with your house or anything, well, come and make them know to see how you can find solution to any difficult and any problem. The controller's office will seek to know the exact percentage of progress on these projects and invites the community to participate in these spaces of control and monitoring of these works that are being executed in Old Providence. And we news of the municipality, we reach to the end of our broadcast. See you tomorrow at 1 p.m. with more of today's last news. Good night.